When Blériot first crossed the English Channel in just less than 40 minutes, the time-saving advantages of aircraft over conventional forms of transport became increasingly more apparent. Cities that had previously only been linked by land and sea travel could now be reached in much less time. Soon after the Blériot crossing, the first airliners went into business. Speed was the business, carrying passengers on bumpy rides at speeds in excess of 100 miles per hour to reach their destinations. But gradually, as the airline business expanded, so too did the standard of travel and the passengers' comfort was improved. Navigation was primitive. The pilot sat outside of the main cabin, following railway lines for direction. But as comfort and speed improved, so too did the aircraft. And by the 1930s, a day's travelling by air could cover distances, such as London to Athens, a journey that would previously have taken four days by rail and sea. Piston-driven aircraft by the beginning of the 1950s were now capable of crossing the Atlantic in less than 18 hours. Air travel was now big business, and the world's aircraft manufacturers were working flat out on new designs to cope with the demands of the airline companies, which could carry more passengers even faster. With the rapid development of aircraft, the obvious solution was to build jet-propelled airliners. The new breed of airliners was smooth and sleek. Passengers would now be seated in comfortable air-conditioned cabins, cruising through the air, seemingly motionless. Crossing the Atlantic for the traveller was now no longer 18 hours of noisy propellers pounding the aircraft through bouncing clouds, but eight hours of smooth, quiet and comfortable travel. <laughs> 